Hey guys, welcome back to the Babbling Boots YouTube channel, where you babble about boots. In today's video, we're gonna be doing a little unboxing of a pair, well, I guess it's probably gonna be more of an unbagging, as you can see, of a pair of Viberg Chelsea boots that I bought as part of their annual archive sale. So let's get into it. So as I mentioned, I bought these as part of the Viberg archive sale, which is kind of an annual sale they have where they have heavily discounted prices for boots. Typically the boots are like seconds that they have that maybe have imperfections. They might be one-off designs that they ran. And some of them are just dead stock from, you know, they have drops from years past that maybe they just didn't sell all of them. So they have a few that they're trying to get sold on this sale. So let's get into the actual unbagging of these boots. As you can clearly see, they do not have the fancy Viberg boxes that a lot of their boots come in. If you buy them brand new, they'll have the nice matte black boxes that feel really nice to the touch if you rub them. These are just plastic bags, which are bad for the environment, but that's another story. So we have here the Viberg Chelsea boot in CF Stead mole calf suede on the 2050 last. And this boot was not advertised as a factory second. And they didn't advertise it one way or another on the site. So I'm not sure if there are imperfections in this boot. Let's take a look at it to see if we can figure out why it's discounted. This one looks pretty good. No glaring concerns or really any concerns in that boot. Hmm. These look pretty good. There might be like a small mark on this outside of this right boot here. I'm not sure if it's a scuff in the leather or some kind of mark. I don't know that that would be a reason to make it factory second. Some people it might be, to me it's not. It's very small. These boots, I guess I should preface where sold for $365 on their archive site plus $45 for shipping, but it's a flat $45. So however many you bought, boots you bought, it's $45 for all of them. So if you bought two or three pairs of boots, you only have to pay shipping once. So, you know, if you want to include the shipping cost in the $365, it'd be $410. For the quality of these boots, specifically these, there's like no... No real flaws that I would be like, oh my God, I wish I hadn't paid, you know, even discounted prices for. I would say they're very well made and no glaring defects. So maybe these weren't seconds. Maybe these were like, you know, old stock that they had from a previous drop from, a, you know, another year. Or maybe these were just a one-off design. I don't know. So I did mention that this is in CF Stead Mole Calf Suede, which is kind of like a taupe color. It's very similar to, I know Viberg at one point was selling a milkshake calf suede boot that looked really similar to this. I honestly looked at pictures online and I couldn't tell the difference between these, the, these and the milkshake ones. I don't know that either are available on the site anymore, but it is basically just kind of a light taupe color, kind of like a camel. If you had like a, a camel color top coat or something or any camel jacket, it would pair nicely with those. A little style tip. You could pair it with something similar to that. But for the other specs of the boot, this is a 360 degree storm welt. It's got the raised edge with the folded welt here for more water resistance. It is not like double row stitching like a Viberg does with a lot of their stitch down boots. It is just a single row storm welt. It has a single pull tab, pull loop, I guess, pull tab, pull loop, whichever you want to call it on the back here, which I'm not sure how I'm going to like that. My Meerman Chelsea boots that I have, and then I think also my bristle black ones, they have two pull loops, one in the back and one in the front, which I, first when I bought them, I didn't think I was gonna like, cause like that's kind of excessive with the pull loops. It kind of detracts from it. But then after using them a lot, I really enjoyed, well not enjoyed, but I really appreciated being able to pull the boot on from the front and the back simultaneously, as opposed to trying to kind of crunch my foot in there. So, you know, remains to be seen how this is gonna go. It might be a little more difficult to get my foot in and out, or I'll just have to pull this further back depending on how tight the actual shaft of the boot is. But it's, you know, I guess a personal preference thing. Some people might prefer one pull loop. Some people might prefer no pull loops. If you do, you're probably kind of crazy because I don't know how you would get your foot in other than like, you know, prying it apart with your hands, which is kind of weird. But that's neither here nor there. So that's just one thing to consider. The sole for this is, the outsole is, 
Lacte Hevia outsole, which Lacte Hevia, and I did my own research on this because I couldn't find a lot of information from Viberg on it. Lacte Hevia is a particular type of sole made from a company called, I think, Railtex in France. And it's basically like a natural rubber. So Lacte is latex, I guess. And then Hevia is the plant, which it comes from, which is like a tree. And basically to harvest it, they have this, this Hevia tree and they cut like spiral strips of bark around the tree trunk. And then they put kind of a spigot into the tree trunk itself. So the, the, they call it on the website, it's kind of a weird term, they call it virgin milk, which is a weird thing to say, but it's basically just like plant, almost sap, and like the sap runs down like the length of the tree into this bucket, similar almost how you do maple syrup, but maple syrup comes directly from the inside of the tree, whereas this comes from like the edge of the tree, and they just collect this heavy milk into a container and then turn this heavy milk into latex which they then make this outsole with and i think i read on their website or maybe it was the rancourt website because rancourt talked about the outsole the sole goes through like a 12-day curing process which helps to build these kind of little microscopic bubbles in the outsole which creates more of a cushion feel when you're walking on it it's got more of like a spongy feel to it very similar to crepe rubber if you've ever felt like a crepe rubber sole it's very similar to that in the feeling and kind of the the lightness of it it's actually really nice i've never had a goodyear welted or a high quality boot that's has like a crepe solar well other than my my slides that i made these do have a crepe sole but other than that, this is like the only boot that I have that has any kind of sole like this, which is really cool. I'm really looking forward to wearing this and breaking it in. And one thing I do like about it is that if you ever see online for a lot of taupe colored boots, I think Common Project is a popular boot for Chelsea boots and they have the kind of the thick crepe rubber sole. And one thing people complain with it a lot is it's lighter color. So it, when it gets dirty, it gets really unattractive from like walking outside on dirt and it kind of turns black on the bottom and it just doesn't look good. This one's already kind of dark. It's not like black, but it is a darker brown. So I think this will probably show dirt and wear a lot less so it won't look as bad over time, which I think should result in a, you know just a nicer aging. And one thing here, I just looking at, this actually has like Viberg's you know, brand on it here it just says Viberg. And usually with Viberg boots, like day night, it says day night. I think the Ridgeway one might say Vibram because I think Vibram makes Ridgeway, but this one just says Viberg. So I guess they didn't. There is something. I think this says Lacte Heavier. There's like a little stamp here. So I'm assuming this is like the indication that it is from the company in France. So that's the outsole, and then it does go all the way through the outsole, so it's not like the latex sole is cemented on. It is Goodyear welted all the way through the outsole, which is nice. The toe box for the boot, it didn't say online, because again, this was the archive sale, and they, this particular boot, they didn't give a lot of information on it. It was just kind of look at the picture and see if you like it or not, and if you do, then you can buy it. If not, move along. Yeah, I think it's semi-structured. Yeah, it's definitely not unstructured because it springs back. It's similar to my service boots size A brown chrome XL where it kind of springs back. So I'm thinking it's partially structured and it is hole cut. And if you know me, I really like hole cut Chelsea boots. In fact, all of my Chelsea boots are hole cut. And I don't know that I'll ever buy a non hole cut pair because I just really like the aesthetic of it. And I think it's kind of a sign of quality because a hole cut Chelsea boots a lot more difficult to make. Typically the lower price you go down in Chelsea boots the more panels of leather it's gonna have on it. Sometimes you can see, I think, Jim Green's, they have a Chelsea boot. I don't remember which one it is exactly. It's got several panels. I think Bluntstones has a few panels. And people really rave about those boots, which they look fine to me. They're not like that great looking, but they have a several panels on it around. And it's like, that's mostly just because they use different pieces of leather. And it's just cheaper to stitch pieces of leather than find a nice whole cut piece of leather and stitch it on there and you know last it so this takes you know more time it's just basically a more labor intensive process is what i'm trying to say and that's kind of why i like it it just also has a cleaner aesthetic to it looking at the boot though you know i said before that there weren't really flaws that i could detect and i don't know that i consider this a flaw per se it looks like the threads for the goodyear welt stitching 
are pretty close to the edge on this right boot on the inside and the outside. You can see where the welt is at the top. There's a lot of space here around the sides. But then the back area where the heel is, I don't want to set my hair on fire. There's just not a lot of edge material. So I feel like, particularly on the inside, I mean, I don't think it's a concern, but you can almost see through the Hevia here, the Lacte Hevia, because it's slightly translucent. You can actually see the threads going through because it's that close to the edge, which might be why it's cheaper. I don't think it's going to be a problem as far as like longevity or anything, because I wouldn't be concerned about it like breaking through. This is pretty solid leather and the heaviest sole. I think it's fine, but that might be why it was discounted. So the last for this, as I mentioned, is the 2050 last, which is a standard D width last. And it's a narrow almond shaped design, which I think they use this last exclusively for their Chelsea boots. And this is a D width, so it is narrower than their standard E width that they use on service boots. So I kind of also wanted to do a comparison of it with my Vibergs on the 2030 last 7.5. These are a 7.5 as well. So they should be the same size. Let's just see if we can get an idea of a last comparison for the two. So here is the back side of these, and you can see that they're about the same height, but this boot is definitely, it might be easier if I do it this way. This boot is definitely narrower, especially kind of in the ball of the foot here. I think it where it's more noticeably narrow, they kind of slim out well, let's see here. It might also be ever so slightly shorter, but if it's not, I think there's probably more room for your foot to go higher in the service boot. So this, I mean, the website, they advertise it, but this is definitely narrower. So if you have the service boot in 2030 last and whatever size you have, if it fits you comfortably or snugly, I would say if it fits you snugly, then this one might be too narrow for you. If it fits you comfortably or it's a little roomy, you could probably go with the same size in this. I will put it on and see how it feels on my foot to give a little bit more information on it and then get back to you. So I did just try these on and my left foot is ever so slightly bigger than my right foot. I think my left foot is basically 8.5D on the Branock and then my right foot is probably more of like 8.25D on the Branock. So that's why I just sized to 8.5. So it, the boot is pretty snug on my left foot. My right foot, I would say it fits pretty well. I think that these boots fit my feet pretty perfectly as how I'd want it. There's like just a little bit of snugness to them, but there's plenty of room for my feet. These are more snug. This boot will definitely require break in in the toe box and the ball of my foot. I can feel that, especially on the inside where my big toe is, where the ball of my foot is, it's gonna require some break in here, which I think shouldn't be an issue. My right foot should be fine though, because it's slightly smaller. I think that the 7.5 Viberg size on the 2050 is good for my right foot and will require break in for my left foot. So basically just to compare sizing again and reiterate it, 7.5 E on Viberg is good for my 8.5 D Branock device feet. These 7.5 Vibergs D width on the 2050 last are definitely more snug and will probably require break in. I would say that I can probably get away with these to fit over time after breaking them in and maybe putting shoe trees in them to stretch them a little bit. I think they'll be fine in the long run. I could probably go up to an eight in these and they would be probably a perfect fit. So I would recommend that whatever your 2030 size is, consider going up a half a size. And I know that's very tepid advice, but it really just depends on how you like your boots to fit. If you like your boots to be a little more loose on your feet and not super snug, I would recommend half size up from your 2030. If you like a snug fit on your boots, probably go with the same size. I think on the website, they recommend just going a half size down from like your brand but with Chelsea boots, there's no laces, right? So like if you get a Chelsea boot that's too big, you're kind of in trouble because you can't tighten it to your foot. So that's why with Chelsea boots, I think it's best to go a little bit more snug. So, you know, your foot's actually locked into it. There's like not a lot of room for error with a bigger Chelsea boot because then you're just going to be sliding around. So that's why I went with this and yeah, you know, take that advice for what you will. 
But I also have, because these are like the Chelsea boots that I wear the most as of the moment. These are the Meerman Kudu Chelsea boots, 7.5. No, these are the eight on the Hero Last. Yeah, these are eight on the Hero Last. So this is like UK eight. This is Viberg 7.5. There's too many boots here. I'm gonna have to get rid of some of these. So this, this boot is definitely taller the Meerman, but your foot's not gonna go up that high because it gets narrower. So I wouldn't really consider that a thing. Oh my goodness, let's see here. As far as width, the Viberg one is actually wider, which is interesting. So the Viberg one in the heel, it's wider, and in the ball of the foot, it's wider. The toe box, it's wider. It's just a wider boot in general. So these boots, when I first wore them, they were pretty tight and it was kind of a pain to break them in and it was painful, but over time they did break in. So I'm optimistic and they feel great now, like there's no issue with sizing. So I'm pretty optimistic that these will also break in nicely and fit perfectly once the suede, you know, softens up a bit. While I have all these boots out, I did want to do kind of a weight comparison. So let's get started with these. One pound, 3.9 ounces. Left boot is one pound, 3.9 ounces. Wow, they're both the same. That's pretty cool. So let's do the Meerman. I have a few trees in here, so I'm not gonna take the other one out. I'll just do this right boot. One pound, 0.4 ounces, one pound, 3.4 ounces. So this boot is a good bit lighter. It's definitely feels lighter. And I think a large reason to that actually, this heavy one is, is lighter than like a rubber one, but it's still noticeably heavier than the Meerman leather one, which makes sense because it's substantially thicker. You can feel it. And I think there's probably just more leather in this boot in general. It, feel, it has a nice heft. I don't know how to describe this, but like it feels for a Chelsea boot. Well, I guess for a Viberg boot, it feels light because Viberg boots, one pound, 8.3 ounces. It's five ounces heavier, the service boot. So it's five ounces heavier, but it feels light in comparison to this one. But it also feels substantial because it's like, heavier than this one. It's like a good middle ground as far as weight and heft with this sole on it. I really like it. I don't know how to explain it. It's just nice. So I did check on the Viberg website to see if they had any makeups that were similar to this. They do have other Chelsea boots on there, but the closest they have to this makeup with the kind of taupe suede is they have a natural waxy commander Chelsea boot that is obviously also from CF State and it would look similar to this, but the suede would just be basically waxed down and so it's gonna be darker until that wax kind of scuffs and wears off. If you don't wanna to have to wait for that wax to scuff off so you can get the lighter suede undertones, I would recommend checking eBay and then Grailed. I believe some people sell or are selling this makeup and there's also a makeup that's called Milkshake Suede from CF Set as well, I think. So that's also another keyword you can search in like Viber, Milkshake Suede, Chelsea and it will come up with a boot that looks nearly identical to this one. In fact, I can't really tell the difference other than this one might be a little bit warmer in taupe color and that one might be a little more cooler or grayish, but I think they're both basically the same. That one also doesn't have this lacte heavy a hill that's from like the milk of trees. And on a note about that, I did also do some research and those trees that they're getting the virgin milk from, they apparently can live because they're not stripping the bark from around the tree trunk entirely. It's like a spiral thing. So those trees can live like and keep producing that milk for like, you know, years to come. So they're not killing the trees by milking them like that. So as far as the value of this and would I buy these, am I happy with the purchase? For the $365 I paid before shipping, because anytime you buy boots from Bob, you're gonna have to pay shipping anyway. I would say, yes, I am satisfied with this for $365. It looks basically like factory firsts. 
other than like the issue with this weld stitching getting very close to the edge, that shouldn't be really that much of a problem. If I ever get it resold or need to, I'll just make sure it's done by like a very professional cobbler. Other than that though, I think these look very good condition. I think on the website, as I just mentioned, the natural waxy commander ones, those are retailing for 850, 840 US dollars actually. So these were less than half the price of that. Would I pay 840 US dollars for these boots? I would definitely not ever do that. And that's why I have to this point never purchased Viber Chelsea's because I'm like, I like the look of those and I'd like to try them out, but not for that price. If you really want a whole cut Chelsea boot, and I'm gonna do a separate video on that at some point, but just a quick touch base. Look at something like a Meerman Chelsea boot. And I think also there is US brand Oak Street Bootmakers. They also do whole cut Chelsea boots. I think most of those are not in like suede though. They're like in natural Chrome XLs and like brown Chrome XL, black Chrome XL. So you're kind of limited more to just Chrome XL with those, but they are whole cut. They're not a lot cheaper than the Vibergs though. I think they're like $500-ish range probably. So if you're really wanting to spend, you know, 365 or less and you want a whole cut Chelsea boot, I mean, honestly, this is like the only option. And there could be other ones, but this boot's 265-ish dollars, whole cut Chelsea boot. I can't recommend it enough. I have several pairs of Millman Chelsea boots, Meerman Chelsea boots, and I really like them all. But, you know, these might replace them in my wardrobe because they look nice and they smell nice. And as far as, I will say, as far as the feeling of these, the smoothness of the suede, it is not as smooth as the Kudu suede from the inside of my Meerman Kudu boots. It's a little bit more coarse. So you can rub these and it does feel nice, but it's not going to be the same haptic feeling as you would get from Kudu suede. Just keep that in mind. That has been my unbagging and initial impressions of the Viberg Chelsea boot in mole calf suede on the 2050 last with this milky outsole. So thanks everyone for watching and please remember to like and subscribe and we have a lot more boot review videos coming up. So thanks everyone for watching.